Hello and welcome to Toxgenics. My name is Abel Sanchez here in the city, beautiful city of Eagle Pass, Texas, and I'm here with Pedro Hernandez. And we're going to talk a little bit about him being a continental flight attendant. How are you, Pedro? I am doing great. Thank you for asking. Um, what is it about flight attendant that you would like to know? The experiences, the high first, process? let's start. First, let's start off with why flight attending? Actually, honestly, um, that came as a total surprise when I was um, applying for um, to become a flight attendant. I was actually um, given the opportunity to go and apply for the government as a CIA um, intern. But for some reason, I have no idea what was happening when I was on the computer applying for this internship that Continental Airlines came out. And I was really trying to do something different and trying to see the world, I guess, is what is what I wanted to. And that came at the right time and right opportunity when I noticed all the traveling opportunity that I would get. And so I went to a what's called a casting call uh, to become a flight attendant. Can you tell us a little bit of how that uh, casting call and the hiring process was? Sure. So what happened was that they go ahead and invite a whole bunch of people from different places from all over the world. Whoever goes and, you know, is interested in this uh, position as a flight attendant. And so they bring these um, potentials into this conference room or to this big room. And so from that point, you get to go to meet, I believe it was for me, was three interview process, which one you get selected from one uh, group of uh, su uh, supervisors to another group, and then you finally meet the last group, which is the ones who actually hire the flight attendants. So out of all those, um, there was, I don't know, there was so many, I would say over maybe 5,000 people maybe that were trying to apply for Continental, <coughs> and I had made it to the last round to go meet the, the supervisors of the airline. So through this interview process, what are they looking for in, in a person to become a flight attendant? Uh, everybody is, is different. Everybody uh, can bring it, something different to a career. Everybody can have, you know, personality. Everybody can have leadership. People can have, you know, just many different things that can attribute to a position in any job. Um, luckily for me, I think that what really was different was the fact that I uh, really w wanted to put them on the spot and ask them, uh, I think they had asked me a question like, why is it that you want to be, um, or why do you think we should choose you as a flight attendant? And then I said, because I have a lot to experience to bring to the company. I'm professional and I am well-rounded culturally and, you know, educationally, just different things that I, up to that point, had gained through life experiences. And so then they asked me a question and they had said, uh, anything else that you would like to ask? And then I said, I told them, I said, why is it that I should choose you as a company? Why not American Airlines or why not another airline? Why should I choose Continental Airlines? And they did not, could not give me an answer. I mean, I left them just basically thinking, yeah, why should he choose us? <laughs> and so then I got hired right there. So what do you, what do they look for in a person as a flight attendant, though, as it, do they look for... You know, I think they look for... I would think they would look for leadership, for one. A leadership is important as an airline professional. One, because in case of an emergency, you have to be able to lead a group of people safely out of an aircraft. Um, emergency, yeah, you, you have customer service, you have uh, people that you want to greet and you want to make sure that they're you know, part of the family, that you're going to have a safe flight. But at the end of the day, your main purpose is to make sure that in the case of an accident, of an emergency, you're able to get those people safe and sound of an aircraft. And so I think that's what really, really sets you apart. If you can, if you can portray, if you can get somebody out of, an, out of an aircraft in, I think it's a minute or less or something like that, depending on the circumstance, then you, you definitely have what it takes to become a flight attendant. So when, so once you're hired, excuse me. So once you're hired, uh, and you go through that whole process, what what comes next right after? And is it is how fast is the process from being hired to get to the next step? The process is seems long because what happens is that you get you get hired and then you have to go to training. A training 
is about depending on the on the company is usually about four to six weeks within f these four to six weeks you learn a plethora of, of aircrafts you learn like about maybe 10 different types of aircrafts 10 different types of seating arrangements uh, different places where uh, you know, flight attendants sit and different emergency strategies so every aircraft has different procedures that you need to follow so you have to know everything from every single aircraft so and in order to progress you have to be able to evacuate and locate different emergency equipment and evacuate the people from a different aircraft in a certain amount of time and like i said every aircraft is different and they're just structured different so you have to evacuate them a, a little bit you know according to the regulations of that plane so then after that after those what uh, do you get do you get tested when yes. you get when you do these when you go through this training yes you get tested on every aircraft so you get tested on every aircraft on its uh, um on its uh, architecture of, of the of the yeah. aircraft and a type you, of door yes and you get tested on their emergency procedure on, on each door and you have to pass every single every single aircraft and what happens to uh let's say a candidate that's at the training and fails to meet these requirements and doesn't pass the test they i to be honest i, th I don't i never witnessed anybody who had failed or i would say failed or didn't pass the requirements of the test but i think they have to start all over again i think they have to go and reapply so go through the retraining and, and, retraining and okay. everything all of which some people have where, the, where they accidentally left or they were you know they didn't meet the requirements of that aircraft of the emergency procedures and then they would they would they came back and then they passed but yeah so i believe that's what the the, the structure was for that so then after that whole process of passing every single aircraft then you graduate and then you're asked to relocate if you want and so i relocated to uh new york with new new, new jersey new york so you get relocated to any airport or how does that work like let's you, say you get hired from continental what where do you, you get go? your it's called your dream choice so you basically say i want to go to L lax which is los angeles so i want to go to your ewr which is new york new jersey so you basically put them in priority order of how you want or you wish that you can have these bases. So any city that there's an airport? Uh, where well, there's a major hub. It's, it's a major hub. Oh, company uh, air. A company uh, airline, air, aircraft hub, which is like the major city with Houston, you know, New, oh, no, Newark, um, Denver, I think was one of them. So you basically will fill these out. And if there's availability, then you get to get to go to those places. But if not, you get selected and sent to somewhere where the company needs you. Okay. Luckily for me... Um, I got N Newark, New Jersey, which is what I wanted in, in the first place because New York is New York right Liberty. Yep, which oh, is was awesome. right across the river. And so when you go through the once you graduate through the training or whatever that process is, and you get your wings, do you automatically get to the airport, jump on a plane, and get to work, or is there another? more training or is it like good luck here you go here's your flip basically they give you your wings and you you go to fly they give you your this is what happens when you get to your to your destination you think you have time you think you have time to get your place and get what's called the crash pad which is where a whole bunch of flight attendants get together and just basically live for a while till they get settled so you are given the idea the illusion that you have about a week to get ready but Mm, that wasn't the case for us. Uh, what we went to our orientation that day, and we got an assignment that day. So basically, right after that, I had to get ready to figure out where to live, and go to my assignment the next day. So I, it wasn't even a week. So I was already flying. Do you recommend this day. for for people that you know any person that wants a, looking for a job, or is it? I, you know, I honestly recommend. This is what I recommend that many. It's a great opportunity to travel. It's a great opportunity to see the world and get experiences with many different cultures, people, and places. But I believe that you should definitely strive and get your education first. Get your education, get a diploma, get something to back up because the airline industry, like many industries, are not stable careers. So you want to have an education to back yourself up in case something were to ever happen. Um, so I, but I do recommend once you get that, you know, if you want to get to travel the world, I've traveled. To so many places um, where I have friends who are doctors and lawyers and you know professionals who haven't really seen the amount of the world that I've seen. Awesome. So, well, thank you. Join us next time and we'll go more into depth of how life as a flight attendant is and what you saw and what you experienced. Do I got stories to tell you? <laughs> thank you. So join us next time on Talks Genics. This is Abel and Pedro. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.